Hello, my name is Reina and this is Ciao and Tell. In today's episode, my guest has inspired me to think about an age-old question, which is, where is home? Is it where we're born? Is it where we grow up, where our family lives? Is it where we go to school or perhaps where we work? Um, or where we have our own families? And there was a time at which this was more clear because people didn't move around as much, they didn't change homes or countries as much. But that's changed now, and I know, especially for me and many people I know, it's not fully clear where home is. Um, I've moved many times and lived in so many different places that I don't have a clear sense of a place, but there are memories from home. So it's even hard to say whether it's a place or a feeling or a memory. Um, so there's no real clear answer to the question, but I do know one thing, which is home for me is where my kitchen is. And everywhere I've gone, the first thing I've done, I put my bags down and I set up a small kitchen, even if it's just a hot water kettle and, you know, some instant ramen <laughs> in a cup. Um, but that's the first thing I feel at home doing. And so wherever I am, I, I remember there was a time I was um, living in a hotel in uh, Southeast Asia for a few months. And I made a small little kitchenette for me in the corner of the hotel room. And then it felt like home. So. My guest today has had a similar experience in that she's moved from uh, country to country, she's moved continents and moved careers. And all the way, she has been inspired because she's a foodie just like me. She has cooked and worked with food all throughout. Please welcome my guest and dear friend, Karina. Karina, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Raina. It's great to have you. Nice to be here. Yeah. And I, um, I remember when we met, actually, the first time we met was uh, maybe about a year ago? Yeah, it would Perhaps be Perhaps, yeah, a little bit yeah. over a year ago. Yeah. And I remember being struck by the fact that you had so easily, seemingly easily moved from your home country and then with a few moves in between and you've been living in the Boston, Cambridge area for the past few years, mm -hmm. and you seem so well adapted to it that it really, <laughs> it was very inspiring for me because I had just moved and you seemed right at home here and you had you knew things to do and places to go and you had work and yeah. and the more I got to know you, the more I've, I've realized that it hasn't been an easy uh, journey for you, at least from what I understand, you know. So you're originally from... Um, I'm from Denmark. From Denmark. From Copenhagen, mm -hmm. capital. Denmark is a little country with 5.5 million people. Oh, that's like the, uh, the population of the people that take the train in Bombay every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small country. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a kingdom. We've got a queen ruling and then we've got a prime minister. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm bilingual. My mother, she's from England, and okay. my father, he's from the southern part of uh, Denmark. That could have been where the borders changed over time, a bit of Germany, so we were attached to Germany. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm from, I'm from Europe. Yeah. Wow, and then, so you grew up there, is that? I grew up in, in, in Copenhagen, yeah. and, uh, and uh, because I've got family in England, we travel there Christmas time, uh -huh. birthdays, and summer vacation. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, that was a lot of trips went there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've been, um, but you, is is your sense of home? Is it would it be fair to say that that's Copenhagen? Yes. Yeah. 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 And you have family there still? Yeah, my parents live there, okay. and my sister lives uh, in the suburbs, okay. but not very far away. Yeah. Yeah. But you've moved some, right? So yes. Where I did have. you move uh, after Copenhagen? So after Copenhagen, uh, my husband, he uh, and I, we talked a lot about moving abroad, working. I've always wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. I did that when I was 18. Uh, okay. I went to work at a hotel uh -huh. in UK. Okay. Um, in a town called Bath, which is uh, outside, yeah. outside London. Yeah. Quite far outside. <laughs> Yeah, south part of England. Were you doing anything with food? Uh, yeah, I, I was working at a hotel, but at that time I, I was very interested in food, but didn't really understand that that was probably going to be a bit more a path for me. Yeah. So I started making dishes for friends and family members when I was 12. Oh, wow. Uh, like a three, 
you know, uh, course menu or I like to get challenged by a cookbook, you know, see a picture of a fish or something else. And I just try to read it through how to get rid of the bones or how to, to manage to, to work with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I've, well, I've always yeah. had that, you know, um, courage, could you yeah. say that? That uh, I wasn't be a little daring. I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of working <laughs> with it anyway. Well, you are definitely a very spunky and effervescent person even now. <laughs> so I can imagine Karina as a child being yeah. quite determined. Mm. Yeah. And, cool. and you're an amazing cook. Thank I can you. attest to that because we've met basically, I think for the most part, at dinner parties. Um, yes. Perhaps. Or around food, somehow or the other yeah, around food. That's right. So I can definitely attest to the fact that mm. she's an incredible cook. Um, and then you went to... Um, you studied as well, right? You did some formal training. Yeah, in, I did uh, that. Uh, I wanted to become a real chef. Uh, it takes about three and a half years at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, but somehow things in life came up, so I had to give it up. Uh, so when I got um, older, I got the opportunity of uh, making uh, a short, like a bachelor career for two years mm -hmm. in, um, in, in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I did that, and that was education with uh, with food, where okay. you learn everything about nutrition, ingredients, um, economy, you know, everything, uh, except actually you don't learn to cook. But by then I, I imagine you were quite a master <laughs> already. I think, I mean, like I'm a self-taught cook, I have no formal training in it, but I think when the interest is there, hmm. um, at least myself and people like you that I've met, we have like this insane determination or a curiosity even to yes. just discover yes. new things and yes. every time we eat or you know learn about new foods mm. we're curious about how it's made or mm. you know uh, different yeah. cultures and cuisines and yeah. and i think that's a curiosity that perhaps comes from a mix of you know just innate curiosity and maybe some family influence as well yeah i, I mean I'm, my mother she's she's from england and she uh she was uh, a lot of stews we yeah. got very well well cooked dinner so boiled I, dinners did you have a lot of boiled yes dinners? but it was good i mean yeah. it was good quality uh and uh, i think that uh i learned that i i didn't like the the more simple danish dishes that we that were at that time i uh, i really uh, I, you always have a wish around your birthday what you would like for dinner Oh, okay. And when I was, I think, five or six, I wanted octopus. Really? Filled octopus or <laughs> snails or, you know, I, I wasn't... very exotic. So I was very, I wasn't really scared of food. I was Dad, very new, yeah. you know, um, now I, you know, <laughs> sometimes if people want me to try something, uh, tell me afterwards what the ingredients was. Because Although I have to, yeah. I have to bring this up. Yesterday, Karina and I went... Um, with a friend of yours to Chinatown and uh, he's Chinese of mm -hmm. background, Chinese mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. and uh, he gave us sort of an insider's tour to uh, dim sum. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I love, but it was really special to have someone who actually spoke the language and knew the, sort of the off the menu things. Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah. And there were, one of the things that were on the table was chicken feet and yeah. I did not try them. No. I have to admit, but you did. I did. You are very dairy yeah. still. Well. So <laughs> it wasn't snakes or anything, you know, so, you know, maybe someday, but that's something, you know, I think that we perhaps lose as, as adults, um, yes. that, that yeah. fearlessness to just be like, mm. yep, you mm. don't know the difference. Like why is octopus icky and say, I don't know, boiled potato is not, mm. um, yeah. I mean, there's many kids who are very picky eaters, but, but that's only... also fearlessness, I think. That... Yeah, but that's true. I, I, uh, I made food for, um, small children. In Denmark, you have uh, nurseries uh, mm -hmm. where they can come from when they're uh, just seven months. Uh, and it's actually, the children are very curious. It's more the, the adults that's around them that may, you know, pull their faces with food, like when it's liver or heart or something like that yeah. to serve with it. Where the kids are more sort of um, curious about it, yeah. you know, and they think it's fun. So I think it's what the important thing is not yeah. to mix things on the plate yeah. you know like a big mushy yeah. because they yeah. like things separate, separate like the colors or what it is the textures, textures and, yeah. and i think that's a good way of you know yeah. introducing them to and then um and i believe you went on to have a, a catering company of your own is that correct uh well you were working private. In yeah i did some private, private yeah for um 
for some people that, that you know had different parties and yeah. so I did that in my spare time actually yeah, yeah. and this is while you were in um, Denmark still yes yes and then now and um, then you moved then well, we moved from, from Scotland so from Denmark to Scotland, Scotland and then after a year we went to uh, to Boston wow so that's I mean that's quite a bit of change mm, um, it is and to have your food passion come with you mm. I think seems to have served you very well because uh, you came here and, and quite soon you started working um, again with food yeah, yeah I mean in Scotland I worked in a, in a uh, school mm-hmm. for kids um, and uh, they got had small children in one part of the building and, and had bigger ones going to school yeah. so the small ones had where uh, they were under a year yeah. so they got food too hot yeah. food and uh, yeah and that was more very a bit boring food <laughs> you know but yeah. and, and now you, I mean until recently you've been uh, doing specialty food for adults yeah yeah um, I at, have at Whole Foods yeah at Whole Foods yeah. that's right yeah, yeah. I, I need to say also in Scotland, I worked in a, um, in a it's called Beautiful Mountain, mm-hmm. where uh, we had sandwiches at daytime, and then I think it was Friday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, there were tapas. Wow. And that was my introduction to actually being a line cook, what they call a line cook, yeah. where you, you're you um, responsible for this and that, when the, the servers uh, come in and ask you, you know, uh, for the food, for the tables, you have to have it ready, ready uh-huh. you know, at a certain time. And doing these tapas, and it was really delicious the way that they, they were made and served. And I really learned a lot, especially about English breakfast. Black pudding, don't really mean. <laughs> mm. um, sausage, the black part egg, is not so... Bacon, mm, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I got to cook poached eggs and scrambled eggs really quite well. Yeah. Wow. And I guess while doing it, I mean, and when you're doing it repeatedly mm. and you're doing it professionally, mm. you have to get good very fast. Although I know, yeah. and you were telling us the story yesterday, how there's something about you that you, you have this streak of, of, you know, being thorough and mm, perfect, like doing things right yeah. all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Um, and there was a story that I really loved that you told me yesterday about um, as a child, you were always given the the knotted mm. string mm. to undo mm. tell me that story again no but it's just that i was very patient actually i don't understand why it was been one of my my not down moments but you know uh so when there were knots on strings and they got very tight like they went to the washing you know and then you almost couldn't loose yeah. them up yeah then I, I could sit there and sort of you know very slowly work with it until the, the tights gone you know went loose and um, you know, there's your special talent. Yeah, I don't know. Like a was. superpower. <laughs> the lace cream. Queen, queen. of knots. The lace cream. <laughs> yes. But I think that's something. I mean, you you talked about how that quality has followed you through everywhere you've moved, and yeah, uh, in that you know you will not leave a mm. baking dish mm. with mm. all the little burnt mm. bits and no. streaks on it. Like you'll be no. very thorough about yeah. cleaning it through, and and so I feel very safe eating <laughs> food with you. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes you see the backs of kitchens, uh, professional, you know, restaurants yeah. and yeah. food trucks, and you maybe don't want to see them so no, much. But right. I'd feel, you know, chicken really sushi. Safe. Oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> and I think lately, I mean, as you've moved from place to place, and I think perhaps your food tastes have evolved and changed and grown mm, organically as well. I've really learned a lot coming to the US. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you love uh, cilantro. Yeah. I haven't. That's- seen anywhere else they use cilantro in so many dishes as here yeah in huh. denmark they think it tastes like soap they they're not very happy about it i think it's called chinese parsley too sometimes although or there is another that, perhaps it's yeah maybe okay i'm not sure because no. there's a couple kinds of parsley too there's the flat leaf and the curly parsley yeah. but those are the yeah. italian yeah. ones yeah. um but perhaps because i know i know it's used in chinese cooking yes and we had in fact yesterday yeah. something with yeah. the you know, that, that rice noodle roll with the cilantro on top. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I know it's also used quite extensively in Mexican cooking. It so is. maybe that yeah. influence um, has come here and then mm. in this sort of new wave of, yeah. of food here, um, yeah. more exotic herbs and spices have mm. entered sort of the, the American food lexicon as quite standard. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they they serve a lot of fantastic food here. Yeah. They're re- and and the the uh, the diverse too. Yeah. 
yeah. a lot of variety. Yes. And it's a lot easier to get access to it. It yeah. is. And sometimes it's always too easy. But. Sometimes the portions are too much. Too but much. I think overall, overall, I've only had good food over here. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah. And the oysters, I've, I've got an introduction to oysters, and you just don't get these kind of oysters in Europe. Yeah. No, they're quite boring yeah. in Europe. You have good oysters. Yes, you, you do. Yeah. You really do. Yeah. Um, and then I think you've also been, uh, the other thing I remember you saying, and we were speaking along uh, the way when you were doing this, but you've been you've been playing around with your own food intake for the last few months, I remember, with uh, yeah. trying different kinds yeah. of, mm. I don't want to call them diets, but sort of food lifestyles. I, I guess it's a diet because you leave something out with purpose, yeah. in a way, for a, a while. We did it in, in, in UK. I got uh, my husband and son, Casper, he, uh, he, he moved with us from Denmark. Uh, to Scotland and, and over here to Boston and uh, and I, I got us on a raw energy diet. Wow. Uh, and we, we so were... So all three of you? Yes. And we were 95% maybe because I did steam the beans. I mean, yes. I steamed things. And that means it goes over... Well, it's, I think it's 35 degrees centigrade. I don't yeah. know what that is yeah. in Fahrenheit. I don't remember. But um, so some of it was... was cooked yeah uh, and then of course vegetarian we didn't drink milk or we didn't have coffee or tea I mean we didn't have any hot things sort yeah. of yeah uh, and I got so ill really really yeah how long did you do that for I did it for I think we were around two to three weeks I don't remember yeah. but I for two days I was in bed I couldn't get out of bed really it was like I had glass all over my legs or in my legs oh you know my gosh. I think it was all the acid that was coming out I don't know what it was. It sounds painful. It was really so. We oh, I gave the book on to somebody else. <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> yes, but you, you did try. do another one that was um, you. You had more success with yes. you tried, uh, the engine two. The engine two yeah. diet. Um, yeah. Which is basically a vegan. It is. Style? I mean, he what he believes in is that you just have uh, basic food like green fe- uh, greens, um, seeds, nuts. All that kind of thing. So no so dairy, no, no dairy, meat. Uh, no meat, no, no oil, actually. No oil, which I find a little strange. Yes, I don't believe in that. So yeah. when I did it, I did it only, uh, I did it with fish and with oil too. Okay. It's because I, I believe you, you should have the oil, oil to to take in the food. And, yeah. uh, I think I, in, in old Ayurvedic uh, tradition also, it's very important that there's some lubrication, you know, within balance but there's some yes. um, oiling yeah. literally oiling of the insides uh, yeah. with either ghee or oil yeah. or you know yeah. uh, some kind of fat yeah uh, and actually I'm still I was really scared when and that's always it when you leave a diet you yeah. get scared because not scared that you you but but just that am I going to ruin you know what I have yeah. I mean what I've done what yeah. I've achieved or you did that for a month right yes or, I did and yeah. I actually was really uh, oh, how do you get back on your sort of feet again because yeah. I, I wasn't gonna live like that but I, I, I but you, had, and you didn't feel sick during this time no felt, I didn't I didn't was it good for you? yeah it was yeah. good yeah. it was good it but was then good. Yeah, the other transition back to sort of so I do life yeah be, so I do yeah. cheese but I, I try to occasionally do cheese uh, like in weekends yeah. and I drink wine yeah. and beer you yeah. know um, and also I find, um, bread is a big issue for me because yeah. I love bread. Yeah. Yeah. I really like bread and he doesn't eat bread in that one. He's got okay. some kind of flat bread that you can buy, uh, that he sort of makes, uh, like a, uh, quesadilla or whatever uh-huh. you can put things in. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm from a country where you, you just eat cheese and bread a lot. So I, I think, like I mean, bread. some of it is also just about finding a balance that suits you. Yes. You know, that may not be an absolute of mm. anything, but it's a balance that suits you. Yeah. And maybe genetics is part of it. I've, I've been uh, talking to people who believe that just eating what your, say, great-grandparents ate, like a traditional diet, um, within some reason, you know... Stone adapted. Age food. Stone <laughs> Age food or paleo. No, not so far back. But, okay. um, you know, that we're genetically adapted to the food that of the region that we're from. Mm, yeah. Um, so there's so many different thoughts and it's mm. hard and it's just interesting to to try different things, see what mm. suits you. You know, if you're getting mm. sort of glass pins and needles in your legs, maybe, <laughs> maybe not so much, but... Um, no, I guess that was a wake up call. It was you a know, like, call, yeah. you're, you're not too good with your body and yeah. things like that. And, and now you're going back home. 
Yes. Which we're very sad about because we're just weeks, leaving. Actually, almost, yeah. In a couple of weeks and going back to yes. Denmark. We're very yes. happy for you. I'm sure you're excited about that. Yes, I am. And you'll be closer to your family again. I am. So yes. that's nice. I mean that feeling of being back home. I, I guess, you know, no matter how much you move and go to places you can I know I miss home still. Like I try my best to mm. to be at home wherever I am. You know, sometimes it's just right here, right now, I'm home. And that's a very nice mentality for most of the time. It's it's it works. Um, mm. But there are times when there's a nostalgia or melancholy that I miss something in the air or something in the food. Well, I think it's the culture too yeah. because I mean you can't watch a comedian over here and laugh at him. Well, I mean, some of them you can laugh at, <laughs> but not really because it's it's a cultural thing, you it's know. A, yeah, sense, of sense of humor, and that's what I've been missing a bit: the oh, sense of okay. humor. Karina's um, very funny with the drug. We did promise that he wouldn't swear on the show. <laughs> We're trying very hard. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, yeah. But yeah, very, you know, and I guess there's a European sensibility, which is, um, I, I know I love British humor, for example, like very yes. dry, ironic, Sarcastic. kind of dark, yeah. quite dark. Mm. And it's hard to find that here. It's more sort of, Although I think that's changing, like there's some good comedians now that I've found because I'm I I will look for com comedy yeah. everywhere. But you've been um, US longer. Though. I've been US yeah. longer. This is true. Yeah. Um, oh, before we run out of time, though, we should eat. Yes. Because Karina has, as a wonderful chef that she is, has brought us something traditional. Because you were talking about home. Yes. And since you're going back home, yeah. um, it would be wonderful. She said she suggested she would share. A traditional Danish recipe. Is that That's right. correct in saying That's that? That's right. And it, we talked about uh, converting uh, ingredients that you can find in the places where you live. Mm -hmm. Because in Denmark, we, we eat a lot of roots. We've got these a bit more heavier vegetables yeah. where, like when you go to Italy, it's like courgettes, red peppers, tomatoes, mm -hmm. and they're used to eating that kind of food. Right. And in Denmark, you, you have more uh, low, slow growing foods, cabbage and things like that. Yeah. So I've made fish cakes, which is called Fiskefrikadeller. I'm not going to try and repeat that. <laughs> and it's with cod, which oh. is also a very Danish fish. Okay. Yeah. And it's actually, uh, uh, it's uh, it's um, chopped cod with egg. Um, I put cornstarch in it. Some mm -hmm. people put breadcrumbs in it. Mm -hmm. There's egg in it. You can put... Whip, you can actually put heavy cream in it. Some people like that. Uh, I didn't. I put a little almond yogurt in it because oh. I want to try to keep it sort of off dairy. Off dairy. Yeah. So it has but I did, I did cook it in butter and oil. And I think mm. that's essential because um, the butter gives it the color and the oil gives it the, uh, the sort of, um, not the crunchiness, but how the, the surface is to, to, yeah. to eat. Yeah. And let's was, let's and actually show this. Let me see if uh, I, can, I can point this here. These are the fish cakes. They're very beautiful. And that's uh, the dip that goes along with it, which is a, a remoulade, you call it? Remoulade. A remoulade. And, yeah, and remoulade you have over here, actually. But it's not yellow, is it? Generally not. Right. Um, I think it's white. I, there might be different kinds, and I don't know that we see it as what? often as an aioli. Um, let me move this over so you can see that the, these are the fish cakes, very, very beautiful, um, crispy on the outside, and we'll discover the inside, how it tastes quite soon. Yeah. And then this remoulade has... Um, it's got vegetables in it. So oh, it has... So it's like... it's. So I cooked uh, roots, and uh, you can actually put cauliflower in, or carrots, or I've got passignac and celery root. Ooh. Um, curry uh -huh. to give the yellow color. Well, the carrot gives the yellow color too. So now, is a curry addition uh, a Danish? Well, thing curry or? they do use curry because we've been introduced introduced to it. Yeah. So we do have different curry dishes in in Denmark, like chicken cooked with curry sauce, or you can't get away from it like anywhere. <laughs> meatballs made out of uh -huh. pork that are in a curry sauce with rice to it, which is also a very Danish dish. Huh. Yeah. I, I think uh, when I was young, the only thing I knew that had Danish anything in it was Danish pastries. And is that actually a Danish thing? You yes. Know, with the, well, the sweet cheese, yeah, I think glaze, the way that jam they, thing in the center. Yeah, the it way that Danish. they make it, I think, is, is a really uh, the, the, the way that they proper way. Yeah. But you have a lot of Danish everywhere, which comes which in different not, shapes and... It's, it's you know. not the real... It's no, I guess, I guess, you know, it's somebody remembers something, makes yeah. it, and then it's popular and it's... 
Dang. It's like I get asked if I eat curry all the time, and I didn't grow up eating curry at all. You didn't? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, okay. It's not. I you thought know, all Indian no. people. No, <laughs> we go out to eat curry. I mean, we have different kinds, but yeah. let's try yeah. this. Yeah. Um, so I brought a fork. Ooh, thank you. I mean, you. that's. I mean, we're civilized. Indeed. We're very civilized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna bite of it. We're gonna this bite isn't of something it. my mum's not gonna like, you know, because Ooh. use your fork and knife. <laughs> so you dip okay, it in the lemon. Tell. We can be a little. You you put lemon on here. if you want to. Okay. I just put it there. Maybe okay, it looks gonna, beautiful. So yeah. Mm. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. So it's got parsley in it, mm. and it has the inside. It has um, egg, of course, and so salt is this and a pepper. cooked cod that you then? No, it's raw, you, you, you chop it, you in, chop a, it a, in, a in a fruit processor. Mm-hmm. And, and you're going to make a paste? No, you, yeah, almost. Oh, like a chunky, yeah. 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 Oh, this so, is really good. Yeah. We'll post this recipe on um, on my website. Karina is going to share that with me, and I will share that with you. Definitely look it up, um, www.kitchen-intuition.com. We'll post this episode, as well as the fish cakes, which I, I'm not even going to say what the Danish name is. Fiskefrikadeller. Fiske frikadelle. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Mm-hmm. My first word in Danish. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, thank you learn. very much for being on the show, Karina. It's thank been you. so such a privilege knowing you. Aww. And we'll still stay in touch, hopefully visit you in Copenhagen yes. at some point. Um, but it's been really great to know you here in Boston and we'll continue eating. Yeah.